Hello, everyone. You guys are going to turn your videos on? Um, so every week, um, we're going to uh, go over the homework problems from last week first. So this week, um, let me open it real quick. Is that your brother? Yeah. Okay. Um, so starting with okay. Okay. Uh first off, did you guys have any specific questions you want to ask about the homework? Is there something challenging or whatever? This is no? my first okay. time at the class, so I don't know what really I'm supposed to do. What'd you say? This is my first time at the class, so I'm not, I don't know what I'm really supposed to do. So. Oh, why were you not here last week? Okay, that's fine. Um, Basically, wait, this is a math class. Yeah. Very helpful, yes. Okay, I'm going to send you the chat. I'm going to send in the chat the homework from last week so you can have access to it. Second. So that's the homework that was assigned last week. Also, we seem to be missing um, at least two people. So um, I'm just going to get started without them. But if they do come, uh, be aware of that. OK. Problem one, A. I, does anyone have a solution or a start of a solution to when I? William? So nine, uh, two ninths equals one over nine plus one uh, times uh one half plus one over nine times nine plus one times one half equals five a uh, one fifth plus one forty fifth. Yep. Um that's exactly the right answer. And you use the method that we use in class. Okay. Um one B. Really raise your hand, so Uh, yeah. Okay. For one B. So it's two twenty fifth uh, equals one over twenty five plus one times one half plus one over twenty five times twenty five plus one um times one half equals 30, 1 13th plus 1 over 325. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, you use the method that we were looking at in class. So good job. OK. Number 2, 2A. So actually, um, but before we do that, Helen, hello, everyone who just joined. We're going over the homework that was assigned last week. And I think some of you guys are new, so I'm going to just attach the homework that was assigned last week. And, oh, wait, give me a second. I'm going to send the homework that was assigned last week in the chat. OK. Uh, two Guys, my sister just sent me the solutions. <laughs> oh, oops. Um, yeah, don't look at that. OK, yeah, anyways, um, 2A, anyone have a solution other than Xiao? Yeah, my sister instantly expects me to be clicking on the solution PDF. You're welcome for the file. You guys also should have gotten it. Um, yeah, you should have gotten it for homework. And if you guys didn't get it, then you should just tell us and we can send it to you. But will I miss your hands, Shola? 
Oh uh, yeah, if no one else wants to answer, but uh, to answer? um, I got one. Oh really? Okay. Um, for number two, right? One seven. Two A. Yeah. So is it the one that says using the method discuss for one in? Yeah. Oh okay. Um. Uh, one fourteenth plus one fourteenths is. Oh yeah. Okay, that's um the sum of two same fractions. If you look at the question, it asks for. Oh. Okay. But yeah. Um, I got. I wait. Does it count if it's a, like a fraction that's not simplified, like two twenty eighths and uh two um two twenty eighths and two fourteenths? Um, this goes back to the question. I mean, the question asks for unit fractions, and unit fractions are just fractions with one in the numerator. It's like one over something. Okay, so um, I have two, wait, just this. Uh, one, two fourteenths and two twenty-eighths added together is one fourteenth, I think. One seventh. Again, um, we're looking for the sum of two fractions with one in the numerator. So we're looking for one over something. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, wait, okay. Yeah. Um, this is actually all covered last week. So um, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll also send the PDF from last week for you so that you can look at it. Okay, anyways, um, William, William, do you wanna talk about two again? Okay, so one over seven mm -hmm. is one over seven plus one plus one over seven times seven plus one, which is uh, equal to one eighth plus one fifty six. Yeah. And in case n equals seven. Oh yes, n equals seven. Okay. Um also hi Olivia. Did you get a haircut? Or wait, was your hair always like that? Olivia? Um my hair was always like this. Oh, okay. I accidentally well. I got slime stuck in my hair here, so I had to cut it. Oh, okay. That's too bad. Okay. Um, moving on, 2A, I mean 2E. Do we want to talk about it? Okay, to William. 2B or 2? 2B, yeah. Okay. Wait, do you call on me, right? Yes. Okay, so 1 11 equals 1 over 11 plus 1 plus 1 over 11 times 11 plus 1 equals mm -hmm. 1 12 plus 1 over 132. Yeah. Again. Also, why is Olivia named Amelia? Is that your mom's name or like Christmas name? Um. My um, my little sister um had a class using my computer in Zoom, uh, and I forget my name. Makes sense. Wait, hold on, Amy. Are you Brian's little sister? Really? Okay. Do you know me? My sister knows whoever what she said. It's Melody, right? Yeah. Hi. I just realized. Sorry for not realizing earlier. Okay. Um, continuing. Question three. I have the answer for question three. Okay, go ahead. So A B means um um we know fractions that means division. So um this means three fourths divided by four fifths, which is going to be three fourths times five fourths, which is going to be, wait, well, yeah, I'm gonna flip to my notebook. Sorry, I wrote it on the wrong page.
Um, okay, so what Luke, um, what Amy was talking about was right. Um, I think she was looking for her scratch paper that she was working on, but essentially you just do three fourths times five fifths, five fourths, and then you get 15 over 16. Okay, number four, this question, I messed up the numbers and the numbers are kind of ugly, so sorry about that. But does anyone want to have a solution or want to talk us through number four? I think I have it. Share my screen. Um, okay, give me a second, yes. Okay, well, wait, what? Wait, um, someone is asking for me to share my screen and um, instead of doing that, I'll just send you, I'm gonna send you the file for from the homework. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Amy or William, I'm not sure whoever. Uh, that was me. Okay. I don't know if I'm correct, but so AB is defined by A plus B divided by two. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we can do that um, if it's a diamond, like the diamond symbol, right? So A plus B divided by two, we can just do, um, first thing we have to do is um, three fourths plus four fifths um, divided by two. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, wait, I think my calculation's wrong. Can I do it after somebody else? I'll see if my hands. Okay, are. yeah, William, do you wanna talk about that? Okay, so picking up, uh, where Amy left off, uh, three fourths plus uh, four fifths over two is equal to 15 twentieths uh, plus 16 to the twentieths uh, divided by two equals 31 twentieths over two, which is 31 over 40. Mm -hmm. And with that value, you can do one third diamond 31 over 40. And that's result in a very big and ugly number, 133 over 240. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that very big number. Again, I messed up the numbers, but it's fine since you guys started. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about um, extended fractions. And yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, so extended fractions are fractions that look like are fractions that look like oh, oh no oh no no okay extended fractions are fractions that look like this so they're essentially just fractions upon fractions that are um, continuing from the previous fraction. And so um, example that we can talk about and try and solve is um, this extended fraction. It may be a bit simple, but it may also be a bit hard. So I'm gonna give you guys a full minute to try and solve what this is. Remember when you divide by a fraction, you multiply um, by the reciprocal, which means you just flip it around. Okay, one minute starts now. I think I know. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask you to wait for the full minute so that everyone has a chance to um, try and solve. Okay, 
So a minute has passed. Um, I know, Amy, you have a Starbucks solution. So would you like to share that? Okay, so I started from the lowest one, which is two plus one and a half. So two plus one and a half is going to be two one plus two, which is going to be four two plus one half. So um, four and two plus one half, uh, four and two plus um, one half is gonna be five two. And five one divided by five two is one times um um two fifths one times two fifths is going to be um two fifths which is kind of disappointing and two plus two fifths is going to be um ten um fifths plus two fifths which is going to be twelve fifths and twelve fifths um 12 fifths divided by one. Um, one divided by 12 fifths is going to be uh, one times um, one times five twelve, which is going to be f the answer is going to be five twelfths. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. Start from the bottom or um, wherever the I guess lowest number is, and then you work yourself up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions about this? William? I thought two plus one half equals two and one half. Yes, but um, five has another way of writing it. Um, here. So two and one half. This is essentially equal to four over oh, two. This. Okay. Yeah. Um, in math terminology, this is called the mixed fraction, since it's a mix of a whole number and a fraction. And this is called the improper fraction. But how, how did Amy change one over five halves to two fifths? Okay, so this or is the concept of, actually, Xiao, were you trying to talk? Was that you? Or I'm not sure who was trying to talk. That was me. Oh, I think I know. Like, like when, when you divide something, uh, when you do one divided by a fraction, you just find the fractions reciprocal, right? Yeah. You, um, like what Amy said, it'll be the numerator times the um, reciprocal of the denominator. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the reason for this is when you, um, divide by a fraction, you ultimately want the denominator, the entire denominator of this part to be equal to one. And so what you would do to make this bottom part equal to one is to multiply both the top and the bottom by two fifths, because then the denominator is one and then you're just left with two fifths over one, which is one. I mean, which is two fifths. Does that make more sense? Okay, I see. Okay, another very similar example. Um, I'm gonna also give you guys a minute to try and solve this. Can I explain? I know the answer right now. Um, again, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna ask you to wait for the full minute so that everyone has a chance to. Yeah, yeah, I'm in after the minute. Oh yeah, yeah, of course.
Tell me when I should explain. Wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I was just about to say a minute is up. So if you want to explain. Go ahead, uh, Amy. Okay, um, so what I did was one plus one half, which is going to be, um, which is going to be two and one. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, it's going to be two and two plus one half, which is going to be three, two. And it's going to be um, three, one times, one times two thirds, which is going to be two thirds plus two. Two thirds plus two is going to be, um, two thirds plus two is going to be, two thirds plus two. Oh, wait, okay. Um, so two thirds, two plus two thirds, which is another way of saying it, is, um, that is going to be, um, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, so two plus two thirds is going to be um, six, um, six thirds, I believe, and six mm -hmm. thirds plus two thirds is four thirds. Oh, oh, yeah, oh eight thirds. Eight yeah. Thirds. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is exactly the process you should um, work on. Um, in the future, after you do more practice on this, like in the homework, you'll get more comfortable with reciprocals and such. But um, hopefully this made sense. If you guys have any questions. Okay. If not, then we're going to move on. Um, this is something called the infinite extended fraction. And essentially, it's just the same thing we saw before, but just infinite. Um, and there's a really cool way to solve, to solve this. Um, but I'm going to see if you guys can figure out first by yourself. So I'm going to give you guys another minute. Um, when we come back for another minute, I'm not expecting an answer, um, a solution. I mean, um, a start to solution will be fine. Um, to do this, just look for patterns. Like for example, where does the fraction repeat and what can I replace with like a variable for instance? Okay, a minute starts now. Okay, so a minute is about up. Does anyone have a start to a solution? Solve this. Julio? I have start, but I'm not sure if it's uh -huh. I I predict that mm, the bottom is actually two, like one plus one half, like which is uh three halves, and then and then if we do uh if we do one divided by uh three halves, like we get two thirds, and then if we do um and two thirds plus one is one and two thirds, which is five thirds, and so on, like kind of like that. 
uh, good guess, but um, there's actually a more interesting way to um, look at what you're saying. Wait, but I don't know what it ends with. Like, like, um, yes. say for instance, it that's the paradox. Ends. Yes, that is the point of the question and why it's a bit tricky. Um, I, bet like the, I, bet the, I bet the denominator is like a variable with some number next to it. Okay, um, to save you guys some suspense and to have you guys practice with this, I'll just go ahead and try and explain this. So what you want to notice here is that this infinite fraction, it's as first infinite, also there's multiple of the same thing. For instance, um, I lost my mouse. Give me a second. OK, so look at this fraction here. Do you guys see how this fraction relates to this big fraction. Oh, William, is that a hand for now? Not exactly, but I kind of have a feeling they're identical. Yes, that's, that's exactly the point. The fraction within the orange box is the exact same as the fraction in the green box. And we know this because it's infinite, right? Um, the orange box is just, I guess, it seems, it doesn't feel like it's the same because it's in the denominator of the first one. But if you're going to take them apart, you see that they're the exact same because, again, they're infinite. There is no ending point. So well, what we can do now is we set, okay, actually, we know that this orange box is equal to this green box. So what we do is that we set both of these to a variable. And we can call this variable, for example, x. So that would mean x or the green box, that's equal to 1 over 1 plus x. And just to color code this a bit more, so it makes more sense, the green box x is equal to 1 plus one over one plus the orange box x. Does that make sense so far? Any questions about this as of now? Okay, no, that's great. Does anyone know how to solve this now that we have this equation that uh, has only one variable, which should, shouldn't be too difficult? Does anyone know how to solve this? Okay, that's fine. What you do in these types of equations is you trying to um, eliminate the denominator that you see. So for example, you um, to eliminate the denominator here, actually, like a question, does anyone know how we can get rid of this um, denominator one plus x from the right hand side? William? I kind of have a thought of it, but maybe it's just one plus x. Because if you think mm -hmm. about it, you, know, you have to find the reciprocal when you uh, divide, uh, well, well, when you divide that by one. No, uh, I mean mm -hmm. like, like do one divided by this one plus x. And if you, um one, Every fraction, every number has its like invisible expansion of a fraction, which is the number um, divided by one. And um, this should be like, wait a second. Oh, I think it won't, uh, I think it won't change. I think it's just, it, it will still be one over. Wait, no. You're on the right track. Um, to explain what you're talking about more clearly, you're saying that we should um, multiply this by one plus x, right? 
kind of yeah, yeah because uh i'm kind of thinking that you can expand one plus x to be one plus x over one like hmm. is that possible um it's possible but it's not really helpful because we know that one plus one over one i mean one plus x over one that's just one plus x and it's just the same oops it's just the same here um even without the over one um these two when we're multiplying them together they cancel out so then what's left is just one um but what you are missing is the other side of the equation and we can't just add um, a random value to one side of the equation or else it's not really true anymore. So what you, what you have to do is you have to also multiply the other side of the equation with what we added before. So if we solve this, this would result in one over one plus x squared. And this is one because of this cancellation here. And this is uh, x plus x squared because you can factor this x out like so. Okay, any questions? But we're not done yet, but any questions? Okay, so we know we want to solve for x because that's um, what the expression is. Does anyone have an idea of how we can solve for x here? Okay, that is fine. Um, we're going to be going into a bit of algebra, but essentially, one way you can think of doing this is um, maybe factoring out x here, but then we're just going back to what we had before. So what you want to do here is you want to minus one from both sides of the equation. So then you have this. And you rearrange um, whatever you had here so that the highest power or two is first. Okay. Now we can introduce a formula that can help us solve for x. And this is called the quadratic formula. Um, let me just write our expression right here. Okay. So the quadratic formula states that to solve for x, and there are some constraints to using this formula, it must be in an in a equation with something like x squared plus, it must be in the form equation ax squared plus bx plus c. So you can only use this equation on a uh, uh, you can only use this formula on an equation that has this form. And we see that this matches here. We have a equals one, b equals one, and c equals negative one. But with that, we have the formula. And this formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus or ac over 2a. Now, there is a very funny video that I want to show you guys about this. Let me pull it up real quick. And it'll help you remember this formula. It's not too important, but it's really helpful. What if we don't think it's funny? Um, I will be very sad. Don't make your sister sad. Yeah, why would you make me sad? Okay, anyways. Oh, wait, I didn't share some. Well, actually, it's not, it's not funny per se. It's just interesting. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? I like interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Do you, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, it's a bit glitchy, but it's okay. Okay. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X 
is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yay! Okay, so that was just the project from Yasa. And um, I just thought it would be fun to share because we're learning about this. Okay, back to what we were talking about. So now we know uh, we have this formula and we have all these values that we can use to plug into the formula. Um, so we can try and solve for x. So we know here that b is equal to 1, and that's because the co coefficient of the b value here. Um, again, if we were to apply this here, it would be a squared ax squared plus bx plus c. And the coefficient of this x with no power, it's 1. So we first have negative 1. And then b squared, so 1 squared minus 4. A is a coefficient of the x squared, which is 1. And C is just the constant value, which is negative 1. And then we have all over that 2 times 1. OK. Um, solving for this, I mean, for the um, for whatever inside the square root, we have 1 minus negative 4, so it's 5 over 2. Now we know that x cannot be a negative number because um, we can't have actually here. It would be better if I got that first. Wait, well, why is it negative b plus or minus the square root of that? Um it's because of the quadratic formula. It's okay. I'm going to pull up. A graph for you to look at. Okay, give me a second. Okay. I'll share a different screen for you to look at. So, this is our equation. This is just most of the graphing software, but um, this is the equation we have. We're trying to find when um, this is the x axis. We're trying to find when. Um, this graph intercepts the x-axis. And that's because when that happens, um, when y is equal to 0, then we solve our equation. As we see from before, uh, from before our equation was 0 equal to x squared plus x minus y. And what, the, what, what you see here is that the graph it intersects the y-axis at two points. I mean, the x-axis at two points. So the plus minus, it just gives us um, two solutions, which is what we want. Does that make sense? Oh, you mean the x value can be positive or negative? Um, it's not that the x value can be positive or negative. It's that the resulting, um, the answer you get can be positive or negative. Uh, oh, yeah. You yeah. know, like the the value of x on the graph like like the which is actually the resulting value like you know like the bottom part it's it's, it's kind of like on negative 0.5 x and then and then like you, you know the result you, you get is is a larger or smaller than x yeah yeah you can think of it that way um oh. although it, it doesn't always have to be um, negative or positive, like for example, um, actually that may be, it might be a lie. Hold on. Okay, well, I I'm gonna double check this, but I'm pretty sure the X value you get doesn't have to be positive and negative. It could be both positive or both negative. But I'll, I'll double check that because it, it's slipping my mind. But anyways, um, okay. Going back to what we were talking about, 
Um, we know that x can't be negative because if we were to go back to um, our question, it doesn't really make sense for one over one plus something and continue to be negative. So um, we just check which one is positive and which one's negative using a calculator. Um, yes, you can use a calculator here because um, square roots, because it has a square root. When this is plus, the answer is x is, oh my God, x is around 1.62. But if x is, but if it's a negative, then the answer is negative 1.61. So we know that it can't be this negative one. So then our answer for x is just 1.62. This is a very difficult topic to be talking about. Um, so if you guys have any questions, do you guys have any questions? Ms. William? I still don't get it. Well, uh, I get why x can be negative, but like for the rest, like, and why is like it's square root b b squared minus four times ac? Um, you're asking questions that I don't know the question. Um, yeah, I don't know why there's a square. I probably know why there's a square. Um, it's good to be asking those questions. Uh. Because uh, uh, at first, I, when I looked at this, I just thought it was a bunch of random numbers and signs and variables. That's exactly what this formula is, actually. <clears throat> let, me, let me do some. OK, so if you were to. Um, actually prove this. Oh my God. <clears throat> if you actually prove this, um, actually, okay, yeah. If you actually prove this, there's a lot of algebra that goes into it, which would be too complicated to explain at the moment. So for now, uh, this is really bad, but um, just to assure that this is a formula that works, um, you'll be using it on one question in your homework too. So hopefully, um, if you want, you can do some more explaining about it. But I'm looking at the proof for this right now, and it's a bit too complicated for us to go into, I think. OK. Yeah. I um, I just, um, I just the thinking like might be hard to remember. Yeah. Yeah, which is why I actually showed you guys the quadratic formula song. It's kind of a fun way to look at it. Um, don't worry, though. You'll probably get it through practice. I know that I, most of the formulas I know, just um, I start remembering because of practice and not because I memorized it, which is why actually in the homework, I'm not going to make you guys memorize it. I'm just going to provide it for you guys. Um, yeah. And it, if I don't, if I forget to do that, you can just always search up the formula because I already tied to you. So, um, yes. Yeah. Okay. We're kind of running out of time and I want to do calls both today. So I'm not going to be going over this question. Um, but if you want, you can go over it yourself. Okay. Here is another problem, much less um, in intensive, I think. So um, again, if two thirds of my number is 18, what is my number? Okay, um, 30 seconds then, hopefully, if that's enough. Starting now. Okay, so that has been thirty seconds. Um, Amy, do you want to go ahead? It's 27, because what I did is 18 divided by 2 to find each unit, one-third, basically. 
So that's going to be 9 in each unit, and I did 9 times 3, and 9 times 3 is 27. Ah, yeah, I see, I see. So you had something like, this is one third, mm -hmm. one third, one third, and it says two thirds, so this is 18. And that means that this small portion is nine. And since there's three of that, you just do nine times three, and that's 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, that's one way to do it. William, do you have something to add? No, I had the exact same. Way. Okay. Another way to do it is you can replace it with a variable. So you can assign my number, my hashtag is number, by the way, my number as x. Um, this results in a bit of terminology you have to decipher, but essentially two thirds of, of this multiply of my number x is, is equal to 18. And to solve for this, just multiply both sides by the reciprocal like we did before. And then um, this is results in 27. Okay, any questions? All right. Uh, another question, same concept. Um, Dave spent two, two fifths of his money and then had $12 left. How much money did Dave originally have? Uh, 30 seconds, okay. Can I explain it like one minute later if some people are done? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 30 seconds have passed. Amy, do you want, no. yeah, Amy, do you want to talk about it? So I did one minus two fifths, which is three fifths. And um, I did three divided by 12 to find each unit, which is one fifth. Um, and I got a four. And I did um, four times five, which is 20. I, I see what you did there. So because Dave spent his money, what Amy did was he just, she just, um, I guess, flipped it so that she's calculating how much he has left. OK. Um, William, do you have something to add? I actually, um, I actually got 15 over 6 because I did 12 times uh, five halves equals 60, um, 24 equals 56. All right, remember that Dave, he spends two fifths of his money and 12 of it is left. So you're actually supposed, you're, you're actually trying to do 12 over three fifths and not two fifths. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Great, that's all the content for today. Does anyone have More any problems questions? are always tricky. What do you say? Core problems are always tricky. Did you say homework problems? No, word problems. Oh, word. Ah, yes, they are tricky. Okay, we have 10 minutes left, and that's a good amount of time to do College Bowl. Um, for those of you who do not know what College Bowl is, College Bowl is essentially, um, I'm going to read out a question to you. And um, when I'm reading it out, you're trying to solve the question. And you're basically trying to be the fastest person to get the answer. So if you get the answer, um, raise your hand. Yes. And then I'll call on you, say your answer. If you're right, I'll ask you to explain how you got the answer. But if you got it wrong, someone else can try and answer the question. We won't be keeping score, um, but it's a very fun way to just um, do problems. Okay. 
Is everyone ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so the first question, what is the remainder when 4,100 4, is divided by eight? What is the remainder when 4,100 is divided by eight? Amy? 100. Sadly, no. Does anyone else have an answer? Zero. Yeah. Um, Teddy, do you want to talk, talk, tell us how you got the answer? First, since I know that four, since I split four thousand nine one hundred, you can divide four thousand um by eight, and then. For 100, you can divide first to get 80. Wait, wait. Yeah, you can first get 80. And I don't know how oh, I actually got it. <laughs> Either the, I'm pretty sure it's actually wrong. I think hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah! Oh no, yeah, I, oh, no. I think four. I was it's four. It's four. Yeah, it's four. It's four. It's four. Yes, four. It's four. Very sorry. Wait. Um, oh, yeah, it's four. I got um, I don't know how that happened. I somehow thought, okay, yeah, it's four. Um, Who got that one? Oops. Who got that one? Um, I'm not sure. But it's okay. Good job, guys. For some reason, I thought 100 was divisible by eight. Yeah, I did too. It's actually 1,000 that's divisible by eight. And not 100, 100 is divisible by four. Okay, anyways. Um, okay. The difference between two numbers is 16 and their sum is 1,984. What is the larger number? The difference between two numbers is 16 and their sum is 1,984. What is this? What is the larger number? Let me type the problem in chat. I guess I can't remember. Um, the sum's nine hundred eighty-four, right? Uh, okay, one question at a time. Um, Teddy, your question. Um, unfortunately, not the whole point of college rules is that you listen and then you try and answer. I unfortunately can't do that. But also, William, one thousand nine hundred eighty. Amy? It's 976 and 922, 900, 992. Is that, OK, first off, it's asking for the larger number, and also. Oh, um, the 997. Um, unfortunately not. Um, yeah, wait. Does anyone else have a solution? Okay, that's fine here. Um, I'm gonna write it out for us to talk about. So the two numbers we're gonna assign the variables x and y. So the difference between them, so x minus y, that's 16. And their sum, so x plus y, is 1,984. What you can do here is that you can rewrite some of, the, some of these equations. For instance, if you were to add y to both sides, and that just means x is equal to 16 plus y. And then you can plug this back into this, uh, the second equation. So you have 16 plus y plus y is equal to 1,984. Um, and then um, adding these lines together and moving 16 to the other side, we have 2y is equal to 1,968. 
and we divide by two, 984. Okay, I, um, and then this is a really large number, but then we realize that X is even larger than this. Um, this number plus 16 is 1,000. And since X is larger, the answer is 1,000. Oh, wait, I heard the wrong number. Oh, oh that's, that's what I said. Okay. Uh, let's do another question. What is the only prime number between 80 and 100 in which the units digit is larger than the ten? What is the only prime number between 80 and 100 in which the unit digit is larger than the tens? What is it digit is larger than the tens? Units digit, but Amy? Uh, do you mean ones? 79. Yeah. Um, between 80 and 100. Oh, 79. Oh wait, oops. Um, actually, Teddy just messaged me the answer, um, 89. But uh, Amy, if it would have been like 70 to 100, yeah, 79 would be an answer. But we're looking for numbers between 80 and 100, so it would be 89. And William, to address your question, yes, the unit digit is the one digit. Uh, how do you solve this? Um, it's just asking for the prime number. So. You first have to list the prime numbers between 80 and 100, and just look which um, number has the one digit greater than the 10 digit. Oh, so there's example, only one, right? Yeah. Well, there's 89 and the 99. 99 is divisible by three. I mean, like, those are the two numbers. That's like the unit digits bigger than the 10 digit. Prime number. Okay, um, um, if four ticks is equal to six tacks and three tacks is equal to four toes, then six toes equals how many ticks? If four ticks is equal to six tacks and three tacks is equal to four toes, then six toes equals how many ticks? Okay, if no one has an answer, I'll just go ahead and try and explain this. So we know that four ticks, I'm gonna abbreviate to TI, is equal to six tacks, so abbreviate to TA. Three tacks is equal to four toes, abbreviated to TO. And then it's asking six toes is equal to how many ticks? To solve this question, you want to create um, fractions in a sense. So you start off with six toes, you multiply with something. We want this value in the end to have some number with um, ticks. So we don't want um, this toes to be anywhere. And we know from before that if you multiply, I guess the same, the same, Thing, they can cancel out. And the same concept idea applies here. To make it so that toes doesn't show up anymore, you mm, put out the numerator so that they can cancel out. Um, but with toes, we use this because that's the only relationship we have. So we do this, three tax over four toes, and then in the second equation here, we have TA in the bottom so that those two can cancel out. And then the only relationship then is this. So four and six. 
And then we do just realize that after we cross out these variables that are repeated, we are left with tick, which we want. So that just leaves us with this equation here. Can cancel out some stuff. That gives us six over two, so three ticks. Questions? Not really. Okay. All of these questions you'll be more familiar with with more practice and also just learning more content, which is why I also like College Build because it covers a lot of stuff that isn't typically um, taught in, in the class. I actually have a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, lesson for one unit fractions is our lesson for um, homework for to, to till the other week, right? Or not? Um, unit fractions, yeah, that was last week. Oh, so if so you want, you can look over it, but it's, it does include some help information. Um, so what's our homework for this week? Are you going to send it to our email or something? Yeah, I'm going to send it to my mom, who's going to send it to the coordinated person for this, who's going to send it to you guys. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, make sure to finish it by next week so we can talk about it in class. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. Class is over. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. Bye. 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 Sister, bye, bye, bye. even though you're literally downstairs. Yes. Bye. <laughs>